one of the things that came up in the van ride on the way up here is there's just lots of testing going on. Does anybody relate to that? Yeah. There is a lot of testing going on. In fact, you know, and sometimes we can easily say, oh, it's like really intense and there's a lot of um, spiritual attack going on. But I kind of poo-poo that <laughs> because I think what's really going on is there's parts of um, fleshly immaturity that's getting exposed. And, oh, I'm in the right place. I am so in the right place. This is my tribe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so um, here's the deal. Um, our most vulnerable places that, are, that would be um, subject to attack or destruction that the enemy would like to take advantage of to destroy us, a good, good daddy is saying, I, I need those, the places that are soft and um, not soft in a good way, but um, like too, too soft where you could get hurt. I need those built up and strengthened. So I need those tender, um, immature places strengthened. And so I'm going to do things in your relationships, in your marriages, in your friendships, in your um, Father, mother, father, daughter, mother, son kind of relationships, whatever the relationship, co-workers. God uses all of that. It's not really the attack of the enemy. It's the enemy exposing um, an opportunity for us to mature into Christ-likeness. So those hits come and I say, thank you, God, for letting the enemy show me where my marriage is the weakest, where I'm most prone. Okay, things are happening and it's really the places in my soul where I don't feel enough security, where I don't feel enough love. And so you want me to come forward in those places with victory. And so the um, verse, what God is doing in the Racine prayer room is he's having us come forth without masks and um, when our stuff starts manifesting, when it's my turn, I got a bunch of people around me who call me out into my glory in Christ, who I am in the glory of Christ, who I really am when God had me in mind before there was ever sin or the curse. We call that our Genesis face in our little troop. And we're all going to come into our Genesis face. And the things that were never supposed to be part of our personality are going to fall off. Yeah. If, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> I love this place. If we stay in the fire long enough, yeah. so we can't be afraid of the fire. Because the fire is his love. It's the fire in his eyes that's love, and it's not going to um, let the mess up of sin and the curse and um, people who are hurt, who have hurt us. He's just not going to let that stuff stay. He's going to go after it so that we come forth without places of insecurity and inferiority that the enemy could exploit. Yeah where we get to be wholehearted lovers of Jesus. I found out that um, in the Hebrew word for pure, because he wants us to have a pure heart, not mixed with anything else, just raw, real, pure for real yeah. love. And that word pure means bright and shining and radiant. And so we just get to sparkle and shine like the stars. Yeah. So um, in... 2 Corinthians chapter 7, it talks about the need to continue to complete the development of holiness within us. And it says that, um, I'm just going to read this little paragraph here. Um, Paul says, even if my letter made you sorrowful, I don't regret sending it, even though I felt awful for a moment when I heard how it grieved you. But now I'm overjoyed, not because I made you sad, but because your grief led you to a deep repentance. Not into spiritual warfare, but into a deep repentance. Don't fight the enemy. Just go to God 
and do a deep turning. Do a deep shift in your thinking, a deep repentance. You experienced godly sorrow, and as God intended, it brought about gain for you, not loss. Um, I've been going, this year has been a, a, a year of um, a part, a one relationship in particular that's um, really being um, strengthened because it was almost broken. And the Lord, I'm at the getting to the end of this year, and the Lord said, it's all been about gain. You're not losing anything. And when it hurts and it feels like hell, he's loving the hell right out of you. That's what's happening. And there's not going to be any loss. It's only going to be gain. It says, you experience godly sorrow, and as God intended, it brought about gain for you, not loss, so that no harm has been done. God designed us to feel remorse over sin in order to produce repentance that leads to victory, and this leads us, leaves us with no regrets. And that word victory is the word sozo, wholeness, inner healing, deliverance. This is where he's taken us. And so we're facing it with each other. We can see... Um, in each other, you know, what he's doing. We, and we call the gold out in each other. Um, so we don't, like, get freaked out because someone's stuff is showing. <laughs> we know that's eventually going to fall off them. And God's bringing them through a process of going from glory to glory. And so our relationships are just getting good. <laughs> and our relationship with him's getting good. And the presence is increasing. The maturity is increasing. And this morning I felt in the worship, I just want to cling to you. I felt this clinging, this almost, I don't like to overuse the word, but an impartation of clinging was in the worship today. An impartation to leave stuff behind and really reach for him and lay hold of him. The tangible essence of this glorious man, Christ Jesus, who has perfect emotions, perfect reactions to pain and rejection, perfect thoughts about wholeness. He is the perfect human being. And his perfections and the excellencies of his personality is in us. Christ in us. And I'm coming into agreement with that. And when the enemy stirs up my insecurity, I'm not going to battle that out. I'm going to start clinging to the one who responds perfectly. And he becomes formed in me. 